Catherine Price with the Cumberland River Compact. And today I'm joined by three friends. I've got Will Kaplanor, Ross Miller, and Gray Perry, also with the Cumberland River Compact. And we are out today at one of our city's many amazing parks. And all around us, there's all this, these green plants and this amazing wildlife. But today we're gonna talk about some of the plants and animals that we don't like to see, invasive species. So let's get started. So invasive species are um, a either plants, fungi, animals, or other types of living organisms that uh, can outcompete native plants and animals and fungi in a region because they don't have any limiting factors on their growth. Often they don't have any natural predators when they're introduced um, unintentionally or intentionally by people, or they don't have other factors that check their growth and prevent them from spreading uncontrollably. So other species are non-native species, meaning that they're not from that area, but uh, they were introduced and don't necessarily have a negative impact. Sometimes it's just neutral or even sometimes a positive impact on the area as well. Today, we're gonna to be focusing on invasive species. It can be hard to tell that you have an invasive species issue until you can really identify the plants. For example, let's look at this forest. How does this ecosystem look? we actually are experiencing a lot of invasives here. This is uh, Japanese honeysuckle, and we're also seeing some Chinese privet in here, both of which are invasives and can crowd out our native uh, species. Invasive species can affect everyone. Today we'll be going over three different kinds of impacts, economic, environmental, and social. Invasive species can be costly to control, remove, or manage. They can also reduce the economic impact of native populations of plants and animals. Invasive species cause serious damage to our natural ecosystems by outcompeting plants and animals for food and shelter. Some invasive species kill specific species in the ecosystem, creating an imbalance and reducing our biodiversity. There are some ecosystem impacts that we may not even know about yet. The plants and animals in Tennessee evolved together over thousands of years. This means that they may have important ecosystem relationships that we are still learning about. Invasive species impact people directly as well. For example, people that depend on agriculture for their livelihood may be significantly harmed by the introduction of an invasive species. Other invasive species can impact human health through disease or illness, or through exposure to new biotoxins or allergens. Unfortunately, Tennessee has a number of different invasive species that are impacting our state. Today, we're gonna to look at three different types. First, a fish, the Asian carp. Second, an invasive insect, the emerald ash borer. And third, we'll be looking at two similar plants, privet and honeysuckle. So I'm gonna talk about two invasive species in particular, um, bush honeysuckle and privet. Um, these, are, these were both introduced um, to the US several decades ago for different reasons, bank stabilization. Um, privet was actually introduced for like privacy hedge screening. Um, so if you think about why they were introduced, those same traits that make them um, good for that can also make them bad for other things. So uh, we now know that these are incredibly invasive. Um, they produce uh, a lot more seeds than our native species do. Um, they actually leaf out earlier. The leaves stay um, on the plants longer throughout the season. Um, they also can have much uh, tighter um, spacing. So basically what we have is these things kind of crowd out our native species and eventually take over, kind of like what we're seeing here. Another type of invasive uh, species we're going to be talking about today is the emerald ash borer. The emerald ash borer is a, an invasive beetle from northern Asia that was introduced here and is now uh, going to be slowly killing off all of our ash trees over the next several years. 
Uh, it's often uh, introduced into places by transporting firewood or other types of ash products that they've infected. And once they get an established in a tree, it'll uh, start boring under the wood as part of its life cycle and it will kill the tree. And this can have a lot of impacts because we're A, losing a lot of our trees, which is habitat, uh, tree canopy, which is important for uh, reducing urban heat island effects. Um, and it also can cause property damage if these trees fall uh, and break off, uh, which can have some severe economic impacts as well. And a loss of these trees can also mean a loss to a lot of economic value as we use a lot of ash wood in all of our products too. So that means that because these trees are getting infected and killed, uh, we can't use that uh, for wood products as well too. So a lot of different uh, impacts, both environmentally and economically. So another invasive species is the Asian carp. It originated from aquacultural ponds in the Midwest and traveled down other rivers to make it here in the Cumberland. It's actually gone as far as the Caldwell Hall Dam far north of Nashville. Uh, these species are dangerous to the local ecosystem because what they could do is they'll eat plankton and other small critters that other fish like bass need to eat. They're much more effective at it and they also have no natural predators. An interesting thing that the carp does, it will jump out of the water when a boat goes by. They're known to hit boaters on the side of the head. People have actually created recipes and the state encourages you to catch and keep the fish all trying to encourage folks to take the invasive species out of the water to give the other species a chance. Unfortunately, once an invasive species enters into an ecosystem, it can be really hard to control it. So let's think about what we can do before then. First, we can focus on preventing new invasive species to come into our ecosystem. You can do this by making sure you're educating yourself and others about the importance of invasive species and their impact. Once an invasive species is in an ecosystem, it's time to contain. This means that we need to make sure we're following the best practices to prevent the movement of that invasive species. For example, making sure you're not moving your firewood that might contain the emerald ash borer and making sure that you're cleaning your boat if you're coming in and out of the water so that you're not carrying any aquatic invasive species. Sometimes it's possible to eradicate an invasive species. And we can do this by using special tools to actually remove the invasive species from the ecosystem. However, if all of those steps don't work, we have to learn to manage our land with the presence of invasive species. So of course, it's more important to make sure that we're preventing, containing, and eradicating our invasive species. Now that we know that invasive species are impacting our environment, economy, and ourselves here in Tennessee, we need your help to make sure that we stop the spread of invasive species. So let's check in to see what we learned about today. We had a great time learning about invasive species with you all. We can't wait to see you next time. Bye.